kid. Don't test me right now. I am really, really this close. Really, really this close. To Hello, Nuggets. Welcome to the food truck. My name is Ruka. And today we are doing our second episode of Disco Elysium. So let's review really quick what happened last time. Uh, so last time we got introduced to our very, very drunken uh, cop. And I th he might be on his way to recovery if we keep him away from the alcohol. But um, for now, he's uh, still recovering. He's an uh, amnesiac from all the drinking he's done. We also met our partner, uh, who's apparently from a different precinct and very, very tolerable of us uh, somehow. So pro good job to him. Apparently, we don't have very good relationships with our other fellow cops from what it seems. And we are here to investigate a murder. Who made the call? What happened that made uh, someone kill somebody? And uh, yeah, we and it took us two hours to get to, to the point to get to the tree because I was wandering a little bit too much uh, on the on the side. But hey, exploration, right? Exploration, exposition. That's that's what it's about. That's what it's about. So now, and so now we're back here at the tree. Um, haven't gotten the body, haven't gotten the body down yet. So I need to figure out how to do that. Let's see. Track down my gun, right? I lost my gun. I also lost my badge. That we even got to be identified as a detective. That's, uh, that's something. Inspect victim's body. Get ammonia from the gardener. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's uh, let's uh, find our gardener friend. Hello, Miss Gardener. Can you help us with uh, a little bit of ammonia? I can't believe it's snowing again. It felt like springtime just a few days ago. Yeah, my partner told me you may have some ammonia. Can I have some? <clears throat> we need directions now. Yeah, what's about the ammonia? Sure, I'm done with it. Oh, just like that. She is very cooperative. She takes a small capsule out of her breast pocket and hands it to you. Go easy on that stuff. It gave me a terrible headache. Will do. I'm not fond of it myself. All right. Okay, items. Here's our ammonia. How do we use a thing? Nope, it's not right click. Do I just hold it? Nope, <clears throat> I guess, uh, I guess that's it. Yeah, I'd rather not go to Fritz for any stuff. It's a little bit too expensive. All right, so let's get back to the body now. There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. It's still a low chance even with ammonia. My plus one has ammonia. But I can't equip it. Let's uh, let's see if this does anything. The ammonia only makes it worse. Ugh. The combination forces tears out of your ducts. You manage to keep it in once. The second time, not so much. When the vomiting is done, your cheeks are wet with tears. Yeah, Kim, that didn't help at all. Kim, what the heck? Uh, the ammonia didn't help at all, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I want to be a cop anymore. Nor does the win right now. You feel the lieutenant pat your back rhythmically. Okay, well, thanks, man. I've seen strong men turn themselves inside out for hours. You are facing tough odds here. Alcohol withdrawal makes it considerably harder. This is true. This is true. We've been drinking for the past three days, apparently. Why can't I keep it in if I've been a cop my whole life? This bullshit! I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to be a cop. Can we do something else? I think I want to solve something else now. <laughs> uh, don't run away. We gotta finish this. 
Do it without me. I just can't keep it down. Uh... I've seen captains puke their guts out. It never gets easier. You never get used to the smell. Every Monday he's cadaver day. Throw up. Investigate. Throw up. Initial autopsy. Throw up. Baguette. Then drive to the station. Maybe throw up on the way there, if you didn't bag the thing tight enough. You seem fine to me. Like, holy crap. I think I've lost my sense of smell. Okay, well, good good for you. A white lie. Not being hungover helps, too. That's probably the other reason, yeah. <sighs> Do it without me. I just can't keep it down. No. This is a two-man assignment, because it needs two officers to complete. I need your help. Okay. I guess we gotta do this. He, re he withdraws his hand and looks you in the eye. You need to get your shit together. Yeah, he really does. He really does. I don't want to get my shit together, but my shit is together. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. Okay. Man up. Man up, whoever you are. We should go talk to the locals. Find something else to do while the wind changes. It's pretty bad right now. Okay. You've gained a thought. When this dialogue is over, go to your thought cabinet and internalize it for special bonuses and effects. A thought? Is the same thing that's been hovering around my head before? Are those thoughts Give it too? half an hour. Get yourself together. Then come back and have another go. All right then. Uh, turn away and leave. We still haven't gotten this body down. I'm, I'm amazed. <clears throat> Okay, so equip and complete volumetric shit compressor thought. Okay. Volumetric shit compressor. Uh, research bonus none, research time 30 minutes. What is the problem? Your shit is a part. It's rather unbecoming of a cop and a human being. It's supposed to be the opposite of that. Together. <laughs> Compressed in a small area. To achieve a solid level of shit compression, squeeze your butt cheeks together for 30 minutes. <laughs> Do something similar with the two hemispheres of your brain. Talk to... People. Maybe that will help. Maybe. Uh, solution? There's no solution. This is the problem, though. Internalize. Ah, I see. This is like equipping thoughts and stuff. Wow. Okay, so 30 minutes. How do I get out of this menu? So 30 minutes. It is 10.37 right now. Uh, it's not the same time as real time. So I guess my theory of this being reflecting real time was incorrect. So we need to wait 30 minutes. Uh, there was a protest on the other side of the street. Maybe let's check that out as much as I don't really want to. There might be something here. Oh, I see money. Hold up. Hold up. There's some money here. Take it. Let's see. What's over here? The lorries probably stored fuel here. Now they store booze. What's this? A foreign car, kept in good condition. All right, anything else? An old monument stands in the middle of the traffic island, pointing toward the sea. It looks as if it's been reassembled piece by piece, secured and mounted in the air with the aid of numerous ropes and rods. Who is this? It's, it looks like Napoleon, but someone else. A silver plaque on the statue's pedestal reads, I am Philip III, the squanderer, the greatest of the Philippian kings of Revachol, son of Philip II, the opulent, father of Philip IV, the insane. Well, that's not a very good epitaph. Uh, let's see, what did this king do? What did he do? You have no idea what you <laughs> did a week ago. How would you know what this guy did many centuries ago? High above you, the king stands triumphantly oblivious to your... 
Uh, I mean, it was a 58% chance. I thought it was pretty good. You know. A bold slogan. Humanox covers the, covers the truck. Covers. Covers? Covers. Oh, there's something else here. A shirt. Tank top? Tank top? Can I wear an undershirt? Conceptualization plus one. Physical instrumentation. Work it. <laughs> Work it. Okay, so it does uh, replace my professional t-shirt. Uh, I don't think we need any instrumentation right now. So we are not going to use it. Away from the crowds. Let's see what else is here. Oh, more money. I wonder if anyone's going to miss all these monies I've, I've been taking. Alright, let's see what this person has to say. The small, wrinkled woman does not greet you. She nods along to something on her radio. A photograph is clutched in her hands, and there is a warm smile on her face. I feel like we shouldn't bother her, but... The photo, an ambrotype from the turn of the century, as golden as her smile. Snap your fingers in front of her face. Excuse me, man. I'd like to ask some questions. Let's see if we... if she's receptive to any questions at the moment. No response. Wherever this woman is, your words fail to reach her. Okay, a little bit more forceful. Wait. Oh, uh, what? Well, yes? She's just a distracted old woman. Better to leave her alone. Alright, I just wanted to talk to her. I'll listen to you, Kim. I mean, that was my first... That was, that was my initial um, assessment anyway, not to bother her. Unless we absolutely have to. Let's, uh, let's check the... Let's check this. Just free to work for yourselves. Even brought my own overalls. I'll work for two. What? Oh, it's this guy, huh? Let me just see what's this uh, door about. I really don't want to get messed with this crowd. Three. Hey, you, up there. Scab? Ask a man with jolly eyes tilting his head. What is a scab? Call me Manana. You're hazy on the notion of a scab. Smells like politics, though. Maybe it's got something to do with the flask he reaches for from time to time. What exactly is a scab? A kind of a worm. Content with mere survival. They come, they want to do our job for shittier pay, screwing over both themselves and us. Everybody loses. Hmm. Uh, hold on, where did they all come from? Beats me. Somewhere in the ground, I think. Oh, jeez. You don't seem to like them much. Gotta be bloody stupid or freaking evil to scab. Or I guess, scared, maybe. But scared of what? Of who? He looks at the mask, squinting his eyes as if trying to ascertain what they're scared of. Personally, I'd rather beg than scab. If the gentleman shouting on the street came begging, maybe they'd have gotten something. Have you tried talking to them? It's better than begging. Come on. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. These scabs ain't begging. They ain't holding on to their integrity. Okay, yeah, I'm a scab poor and downtrodden. Right to work. I'm not a scab, I'm a cop. Okay, let's uh let's leave. I think that's all the information we need. Is there something up here? Oh, I see stuff up here. We might be able to access it. In case of a strike, press button behind guard. Guess what's happening right now? A hermetically released door. Sealed door. Locked by electronic means. There's no lock picking or door kicking this one. Obviously. Measure head makes all men quiver. The Greater Revical Industrial Harbor. No soft and weak like other men. Not soft and weak. Nobody betrays your degeneracy. Okay, Measure Head. Uh, what does that mean? 
Yeah, Measure Head. His body totally betrays his degeneracy. What does that even mean? <laughs> the young woman at the giant's side agrees. Oh, he's got a harem. Say nothing, size him up first. What do you mean my body betrays my degeneracy? Does not degenerate. My body is unimportant. I'm with the police and we need to get into the harbor. Not yet, though. You have succumbed to Al Ghul. Al Ghul. His face contorts in disgust, as if he were smelling a dead rot. Oh, I think I know what he means. You reek of it. An invisible sword of Al Ghul emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. Uh, I'll go. Smell your breath. Kim, is it really so bad? Yeah, it probably is, actually. You're right, I'm an alcoholic. Now I need to enter the harbor. Not yet. I don't have a problem with Al Go. I just drink a little on the weekends. Enough, I need to open the door to the harbor. Uh... Al Go? Yes, Al Ghul. Explain, please. Explain to Al Ghul. He means alcohol. Understood. I doubt it. My microcephalic race self. Oh, jeez. Are you calling me small-brained? Because I think you're calling me small-brained. I don't have a problem with Argo. I just drink a little on the weekend. Your mouth moves, but the one who speaks is al -Ghul. You are but a vessel for the ghoul now. Very little of yourself remains. Occidental Aplo Group B4 is done giving orders around here. The influence of the Ham Sandwich Race is waning. The Ham Sandwich Race? Interesting. First, let me make this clear. I am not a drunk. I'm a cop. I just drink every now and then. Everyone does. I am the police and I need you to comply. Now. Uh, the race stuff is unimportant here. I just need you to help me do my job, please. Uh, diplomatic. Let's try to be diplomatic. Begging for help. Attempting to pass fear for cooperation. How far the Occidental Ablo Group has fallen. You were once a noble and powerful race. You gave the world eugenics, electricity and powerful weapons of war like missiles and aerostatic aircraft. You made great gains in metallurgy, race theory, and statecraft. You dominated lesser cultures, like the deformed Hemians and the inexplicably potato-obsessed Koikos. But now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness, and with frivolous pop culture. Okay. You will be superseded. Isn't that right, babe? It is, baby. Yeah, you know it. I don't know. You don't sound very convincing. There is a button right behind him. Just out of reach. It must be the one that opens the door to the harbor. Come on, I just need you to move about 20 centimeters back. Push him out of the way, you're right about all this. Now I just need you to let me go into the harbor. I don't think I need to go into the harbor yet, so let's let's uh, not push this just yet. I mean, I'm kind of curious what's about this door. But I don't think I need to start anything yet down there. Probably should talk to this guy first, though. We hasn't been 30 minutes yet. Bastards! We have a right to work! The man yells towards the harbor gates. His voice is the loudest of the lot, and oddly screechy for a man of his size. What's going on here? Looks like too much trouble for my taste. Hold up and stay frosty, everyone. Cops are here. No, oh, they don't like us. The broad-shouldered alpha male turns to you. He's a full head taller than everybody else here. 
You here to fuck with us? Beat the honest worker down. Why should I? We're here to fight for a cause. Stripes usually have problems with people who have causes. Okay, then I'm thinking no. Good. We're fighting for a cause here. Right to work! Right to work! Besides, we're not that different. It helps if people see us talking, cops and strike breakers together. Shows authorities are on our side. Builds confidence. What kind of cause are we talking about? I don't think I've chosen any sides yet. Regardless, I have some questions for you. Maybe you should ask them the questions. Like, why we're not allowed to make a living here. Shame on you! We have families to feed, you piece of shit. He points his finger at the man sitting on the railing. So do we, Scott. The loitering man hollers in return. Uh, let's see... What exactly is your goal here? We were promised work. We'd be in there, working, if the bastards hadn't shut the gates. Promised work? Okay, fair enough. Um, and you are unable to breach the entrance. Main gate's locked. Would take heavy ordnance to bust it open and try to get in through the secretary's office. Door's locked. The guard's blocking the way to the access panel. Ah, that guy. He didn't seem much of a guard to me. I thought he was some kind of thug. And I don't mean the scrawny mess punk either. I mean head measurer. Or whatever he is. Yeah, I've, I've met head measure already. Uh, why don't you just talk to them? Well, that's obviously what they're doing right now, and it hasn't been working, so... Have you considered storming in, like all of you? Um, I don't want to be the ones to, to suggest this, but... But... Why don't you go arrest them instead? I'm sure they've done plenty of criminal shit. They have that look. It would be better for the neighborhood if you went home. At least for now. If you can't get in anyway. No! They will give up eventually. Or get drunk. Leave the button unguarded. Then, we charge. The man rubs his jaw. A perfect, lightly bearded square edge. Let's see. I'm just gonna leave now. We have nothing to do here. Um, at least, it's not our concern at the moment. So we're just gonna look around. Let's see what else we can find. <clears throat> What's this? Just a book about Pate. Pate's alright. This book, you don't really understand what it's about, nor does it seem important. A book about Boayo de Rococha. What? How do, does that, how do you pronounce that? A book about the future. The government reads your mind using radio technology. Oh, scary stuff. On the cover stands a muscular man, very muscular, surrounded by flames. This book has a rose, a pistol, and a half-naked dame on its cover. Okay. This book appears to be erotica, but without actual erotica. Man from Hemdal and the Wildfire. That's this thing. Okay, I guess uh, there's no thought bubbles anymore. This coin-operated viewer has been banged up. Inoperable. Anything else over here that I can pick up? Let's see. What's this? Tire tracks leading onto the roof. The slush and rain has almost washed them off. The spirited chirps and clicks of swallows fill the air. Not bad, Renee. You seem to stand a chance this time. Life doesn't need to be a struggle. He covers his mouth to hide a burp. I'll be with you in a moment, officer. 
Let me just finish my sandwich. Talk to angry old Rene first. <laughs> angry old Rene. Oh, jeez. Okay. Hey, Rene, what's up? Have you no shame? Whining about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape. <laughs> Rene, you're a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, let's just try to enjoy the game, all right? This one's still chewing on his sandwich. I'm trying to, but you keep breaking my concentration. You're old. I can see that. We're both old. Now stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I love him already. These manly men are playing balls. This is a ball game. Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. Shoot first. Ask questions. Questions never. Shouldn't I ask what game it is first? No, you got this. There's the ball. You're the game. Act without hesitation. Uh, I don't really want to rain on these old guys' parade. A moment of your time, fellows. Don't get involved in the game. Better observe them first. You know what? 83%. It's pretty good. Let's just go for it. Oh? You are immediately surprised by the ball's lack of weight. No matter. You'll make it work. God, this is right. You feel the familiar tremble of excitement and adrenaline that precedes every victory. Time has frozen. Feel the ball. The cold metal ball is surprisingly smooth against your neck. It has a pattern on it. Probably a sponsored ball. Yours would only be covered with bumps of learning and scars of victory. Already, your muscles are adjusting to the weight, the nervous system calibrating, until you and the ball have merged into a single entity. The man ball is ready. And ball is ready, I see. Taking their surroundings. A chilly breeze ruffles your hair as you stand there, feet firmly planted. All sounds, smells, even the wind, everything fades until the only thing left is the union of man and ball. There is time for a last glance inward. Who am I? An embodiment of pure motion. A fine-tuned locomotor running at maximum efficiency. The inertia can be contained no more than a bullet living gun. Let go, be the bullet. Oh, is this a shot? Oh, that's not where it's supposed to go. It's a shot put. Nah. Merde! Bordel de merde! Yeah, I didn't think that that was gonna go well with this guy. A whole house of shit. It wasn't whole house of shit. The shot was at least 23 meters, probably 24, and then some. Nothing to be embarrassed about. But you weren't supposed to throw it into the water. What the hell is your problem? Uh, not a weak trice, not a weak right triceps, that's for sure. I don't care if you are a cop. You do not just ruin someone's game. It's so goddamn disrespectful. Yeah, that's my initial thought, but I had a, I had a chance, so I took it. I'm sorry. Wait, what? I'm sensing anger, and I don't understand why. I'm sorry. You vandalized our game, son. <laughs> We can't play petonk with five bull. Uh, sorry, an honest mistake. Are we good? Oh, petonk, I understand. No, no, you don't. Our petonk game is ruined. We want our bull back. I will get your bull back. Don't worry. Take it easy, Rene. This is just a misunderstanding, isn't it, officer? No harm done. Yes, Mr. Gaston, that it, it was my it was my misunderstanding. Of course there's arm done, you oin slug. You are as a goddamn bull. Okay, I will try to fix this. Listen guys, the ball is gone and I have a murder solve, alright? Uh ex I will accept the task. Good. Mistakes are forgiven when men at least try to right their wrongs. I believe you will try. Now why did you approach us? Yes. Why did you come here? 
It's unlikely they know anything about the murder. Uh, killing time. We never know. He might know something. This is a good vantage point. Do you know anything about the man hanging in the back of whirling in rags? You seem to be playing in a creature. I saw the statue of Philip the Third near the roundabout. Uh, let's see if they know anything about the the dead dead guy. Unfortunately, I don't. Unlike most of the locals, I have no qualms about assisting law enforcement. But this affair has passed me by completely. And most of the locals? In Martinez, the union is the law. So can you really blame them? But you don't have problem with cops. Cop is a pejorative term. I don't have a problem with policemen. On the contrary, I admire the effort to bring order to our streets. Okay. He doesn't know about the crime. Your time is better spent discussing politics. So how about police women? Uh, let's not talk about police women for now. Though so again, you don't know anything. Uh, is that it? If I knew, I would not be afraid to tell you. I simply don't. I am an old man, not a coward. The daily business of the riffraff no longer concerns me. It is true, sire. He knows nothing. Let's see. I saw the statue of Philip III near the roundabout. Ah, yes. King Philip III on his steed. A reminder of what Revachel once was. Oh, absolutely. At the mercy of a cocaine-snorting tyrant who emptied the treasury so he could sleep on a bed of gold. <laughs> uh, you have some words, too. Cocaine? cocaine -um? Sounds like our kind of king. And just imagine what kind of cocaine a king would have had. A superpower, feared and respected. A testament to what this country can be under the leadership of a true king. Someone who knows how to rule. Let's see, what was that about cocaine? Nah, uh, how should a true king rule? Decisively, without fear of offending the sensibilities of the frail and weak-minded among his subjects. This is something the insurgents never understood. Let's see, seems to me a leader should take care of his people before himself. Powerful leaders, not afraid to do what must be done, that's what this country needs. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I don't know what the situation of the people are, but let's see. Not afraid to do what must be done. Let's see what uh, th he's, this guy thinks about this. Revachol would be a different place if more people realized that. Uh, we could still be there. Don't get started on that again. What happened, happened. There is some weariness in his voice now. He's heard this rap many times before. The Carabineer doesn't reply, but his entire being communicates unbreakable resolve. Uh, let's talk about something else. Right. You seem to be playing in a crater. Yes. The terrain here provides an interesting variety to a familiar game. Do you know what created it? I do. Fire from heavy artillery. Oh, it's been there for a while then. Okay, it's a crater left by artillery fire, but why? Why what? Why was heavy artillery used? Because that's what happens when communists hijack your country, execute your supreme leadership, and turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. Who are the communards again? Uh, why did, why did you use uh, artillery fire against them? Maybe we can do this history lesson much later. Uh, who are the communards? Commies, communists, socialists, anarchists. Call them what you like. They just chose the name to feel special. <laughs> Senseless sentimentality. Maybe we can do history lesson later. Fine. What uh, do you want now, then? I guess let's go grab the ball. Okay. Volumetric ship compressor. <laughs> uh, it's done. Bizarre scientific news from Revachol West today where a police officer's shit has been observed at a pressure of around 495 gigadecimals. These metallic hydrogen levels of shit togetherness were thought to exist only at the center of collapsing stars, <laughs> not law officials. It remains to be seen 
how long the shit singularity lasts. <laughs> I don't know why I, I, it sounds so funny. <laughs> All endurance white checks unlocked. Uh, learning cap for endurance race to four. Nice. Well, that's done. Let's see, replace lost bull. Due to some confusion over the game Renee and Gaston are playing, you threw one of their petank bulls far into the sea. The shot was excellent, but now you owe them a bull, or at least similar looking metal sphere. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Wonder where I can There might be something here. Because I can't go into the sea and dig it up. That's kind of impossible. An ancient fountain. It doesn't pump water anymore. There's a tree in it. Let me see my stats. Uh, let's see. What was that? Endurance? Yeah, I wish I could level up my endurance. That's not going to be anytime soon, though. Some great techno tectonic force has cracked the pavement like an eggshell. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Yeah, I usually don't. Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. You can revisit the bench, if you ever need to pass the time when Lieutenant Kitsuragi is gone. Let's see, what's this? Enormous bulls worthy of a real man. Hmm, let's see. Oh, there might be something here. Wait, let's check the trash first. If you had a bag in your hand, perhaps you could collect these bottles and sell them. Except I do not. What's this? This coin-operated viewer is facing south. The instruction manual says to insert 25 centims and pull the handle while looking inside. Then use the focus knob to zoom in if necessary. Why place a tourist attraction in the middle of such poverty? This is true. Uh, but we don't really need to do this, so we are gonna leave. The ad reads, broken window? Tibbs has windows. Who's Tibbs? Let's see. You hear the distant squall of seabirds. That's my song. That's a... Nah. This shit. Plastic bag. Oh, now we have a plastic bag. <laughs> uh, now we can uh, now we can get bottles to sell. Oh, more money. Let's take it. Who just leaves money like that? I mean, RPGs. It's one thing, but this is a little bit different. A spider of bullet holes lines in the wall. Okay, well, let's get some bottles. I wonder how many bottles I can carry. Take all. I wonder who we sell these to. That's the other question. Alright. Bottles here? Nice. Okay. Well, I think we have a decent amount of bottles, I don't, though I don't know exactly how many. Doesn't exactly show us. But we're collecting trash, becoming a good citizen, I think. Alright, let's see if we can sell this. We could use a little extra cash. Hey, hey, girl. That's... Um, is this about the questions again? Because I don't really know anything. No, I was wondering I could, where I could sell the the bottles. Apparently, it's not here. Where do I sell the bottles? The tear machine stands in the corner. Ah! A sign says one bottle equals ten cents. Your bottles clunk into the machine, and the money appears with a satisfying jingle. You're a richer man now. Yay. We got some cash. Can we afford anything? 
See, I think there was some... Um... <clears throat> you see several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath a display of croissants and juice bottles. The raincoats are transparent. Here you go. Right, I think this uh, raincoat is going to help our endurance check, hopefully. The clerk removes the garment from the lower shelf and hands it over. What's that? What is what? Uh, a raincoat? You know, like the one you bought earlier? Man, this girl is sassy. Okay. Raincoat. Esprit the corpse. Alright, hopefully this will help a little bit. Alright, let's uh... Let's go check the body now. Hopefully we can bring it down. Oh, wait. That's right. Let's see if uh, we can get something to open the trash can. From the... The barkeep. He's not, he's not been very kind to us, but it's worth a shot. Real mature man, what exactly were you trying to accomplish? You do understand you still owe me money, right? Yeah, I don't have, I don't have it. Damn, your feet thought we got away. Uh... I see, sorry. I know it was responsible for me to run. I ha you have to understand, I was desperate. <laughs> you know what? The stupid drinks you've had are on the house. You know why? Because I know you can't pay for them. Not because you ran away. Fair enough. Now, I still have to charge you for three nights and the broken window. That's a hundred square. We do not have, um... We don't have, we don't have that money yet. Don't thank me yet. You still owe me a hundred real. If you don't have it by tonight, I can't let you up there. Okay. Now, what the hell did you want? I assume you wanted something to come back here. Let's see, about the money I owe... Uh, I've seen something here at the Whirling Gate. A thing I need to talk about. What thing? I saw a sign that said the mess hall is under reserve for the Union. There's something else I want to ask about. What? By the way... You should come back to this thing-based questionnaire if you see anything interesting in the Whirling later. Mine? No, it belongs to the Whirling in Rags. Well, yeah, I mean, the, technically the trash can does belong to the Whirling in Rags, but still. Thank you for clearing that up. Why do you keep the container locked? Why? To keep the hobos and drunks out. That's why. And the neighbors too. They put their trash there and they don't pay for the garbage company. I thought as much. And are you the only party with access to the trash container? Well, yes. Us and the garbage disposal company. It seems a little callous, doesn't it? Something stirs in you. I wonder what this feeling is. No, it doesn't. Nothing stirs in me and it isn't callous. It's common sense. Actually, it is pretty much common sense, so... Okay. Okay, then. Maybe you're callous yourself. We need those keys. What do you need them for? We need to check the... Garbage? It concerns the case. Please cooperate. Just bring them back once you're done, please. Okay, let's see. <laughs> By the way, I'm going to sing karaoke. No, not, not now. Not now. We don't want to give this guy a heart attack just yet. But I kind of want to. By the way, where is home? The address is coming up blank. And this place sure isn't it. Do I even have one? But you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You had to be somewhere. Far away? In time or space? Uh, both. That doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. Could I trace the way back somehow? To the exact street? The exact number of building? I'll live in a dumpster. I don't care. <laughs> Fuck everything. Hobo cop. <laughs> Uh, Hobo Cop sounds interesting right now, but eh, let's see if we can get some more information. You can try. Run some addresses in your head when you get the time. Maybe a street or an apartment will appear. I see. We got a thought. Lonesome, uh, long way home. Six hours! Factual memory returns, research time, six, six hours, five minutes. 
Let's rewind. Let's trace your drunken steps back home. Jump across a raised channel bridge southwest of here. Fall over. Get up. Get off the asphalt in 20 minutes. Shuffle your feet through the courtyards, scaring little children. Go under the street raised motor tract. The 881 until you reach the domain eminent in North Jamrock. The streets are frozen this time of year, caked with ice. Walk down Main to Perdition. There's a side alley there and your footprints in the mud. Okay. Okay. Pay for damages. Yeah, a hundred real. A hundred real is gonna be- oh, what's this? I can't reach it. What's in the kitchen? Kitchen reserved for personnel until 1300. Okay, so we got a couple hours before that happens. Let's talk to this lady. Hello, sweetie. Hello, ma'am. Wait, who's sweetie? Does it mean you like me? Who's sweetie? Why, you are, officer. I'm no sweetie. Look at me. Hmm, maybe I am. Look at me. <laughs> You're a handsome man, officer, with your mustache and your chiseled jaw and that silly dimple on your chin. Well, she can see past the drunkenness. Amazing. Thanks, I appreciate it. Dimple or not, I'm a bitter man. The years have taken their toll. That stupid dimple has only brought me suffering. I don't want to talk about the dimple anymore. Thanks, I appreciate it. Mmm. Yeah. You must forgive me. I'm getting so scatterbrained. I completely forgot to introduce myself. Don't worry, Lena. I can see your name right here in the in the text. I'm Lena. My husband Morel and I are staying with our friend Gary just down the street, but I come here for tea when they're away. Her eyes glitter over the rims of her glasses as she looks up, smiling. This Lena is wacky enough for the Motley Crew. Hire her on the spot. <laughs> you seem to be in a chair. How do you like to roll with me? I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't know where I am or what I'm doing. Or anything. Sweetie needs money. Do sweeties get money? Oh, let's not ask this lady for money. I, I would feel really bad about that. I don't know if you noticed, but I don't know where I am or what I'm doing or anything. Yes, officer. You look rather dazed. Like a stunned fox. But surely things can't be that bad. Her eyes follow your movements with some concern. I drank so hard I forgot literally everything. I hope you're right. I hope it's not too bad. Yeah, I'm blowing this whole thing out of proportion. Forget I said anything. Yeah, I, for I forgot everything. Who am I? I don't even know who I am. Oh my. You know where we are, right? Whirling in Rags Cafeteria? It was on my case. We're in Revacol. Oh, uh, Insulind? I don't really know, some seedy hotel. A war zone at the edge of the world. We're dead, haunting each other. We're ghosts. Oh, I would like this. I would like to do this answer. Uh, but let's start with the basics first. Let's start with the basics. Cafeteria. He was on my teeth. Keys. That's right. And where is the Whirling in Rags cafeteria itself located? In Revacol? The edge of civilization in hell. We're all in hell. See, I have no idea. <laughs> yes. Indeed. We are in the fine city of Revachol. Revachol, sorry. Revacol, Revachol. Hmm, okay. Revachol is the disgraced capital of the world. Something like that? I don't know. I don't know diddly squat about Revachol. What kind of place is this? How would I even begin to tell you? Revachol is the most beautiful city in the world. We're fortunate to be here, you and I. Wow, lots of different opinions about the city. I haven't seen very many other cities personally, but everyone says so. Revachol is a rare jewel. This city used to rule the world, though it has seen better days. There's a pause as she studies her expression. You must look quite lost. Speaking of history, you know what year it is, yes? Uh, spring of 51. Sure, it's the year 973. All I know is we are approaching the end times. 
It's a bad year in my late 40s. Or 50s? I don't even know how old I am. Yeah, let's go with that. There, there. <laughs> the year is 51, and spring has only just started. I'm sure there are better days ahead. I would hope so. She looks flustered, her hands smoothing out the creases in her blanket, even as she attempts to reassure you. The lieutenant studies you, rubbing his chin. I'm beginning to suspect that you might indeed be completely adrift in this reality, thinks the lieutenant. How can it be that bad? Never mind. We're in this now. Yeah. Okay. I can tell that this is taxing for you, so I'll just ask one more question. What regime are we living under? What mode of government? This one, I have no idea. I'd like to think it's a dictatorship of the proletariat, but something tells me it's not. Our leaders are fierce warriors who traverse the plains on steeds. Civilization cowers before us. We are governed by intelligent machines that perform calculations to determine the freest market. Everyone hustles and grinds like a badass visionary. Radios are being used to control people's minds and distort our perception of reality, concealing our true nature to our concealing our true masters, foreigners and women. Cop, we are living under the cop regime. Regime. Uh, I think it's number two. I think it's two. Oh, sweetie. It's really not. There used to be people who thought that way. Other people who wanted those things, but they all went extinct. So is it a democracy? Because I'm not entirely sure. Revishol is a zone of control led by an alliance of foreign powers called the Coalition. We have almost no government of our own, and certainly no dictatorship of the proletariat. So are you saying this is an anarchy? But they still have cops. If there's no government, how come there are cops? I don't even know what to say, I'm so disappointed. Yeah, if there's no government, how come there's still cops? Oh dear, this is troubling. You really ought to know that, being one yourself. There aren't any cops in Revishol, not in the traditional sense. The status of law enforcement has been a complicated matter since the revolution. Right, we're technically a militia. If I remember correctly. But we should stop for today, sweetie. You look like you need a break. Besides, I'm not the best person to explain the big things to anyone. But you, madam, have been very, very helpful. So I thank you for that. She's scared now. She's realized you really are brain damaged. Uh, who could tell me more? So how did I do? You didn't do too well, dear. It does look like you're having trouble remembering things. History and places. Remembering reality, in a word. It's very odd. Yeah, I, I, I feel that. A sigh. The lieutenant buries his nose in his notebook. But maybe a fresh set of eyes is what the world needs. And while I'm no doctor... Such bouts of amnesia are often temporary, so I, I wouldn't worry too much. Who could tell me more? Someone more educated in sweeping matters. Maybe you should ask? I don't think he wants to talk to me. No. I'm not an encyclopedia. I won't be a guide either. I'm a detective. Of course. Then I don't know. Someone rich, maybe? Wealthy people are educated. Though, I don't know where you would find a wealthy person in Martinez. Uh, you seem to be in a chair. Would you like to roll with me? Would you like to roll with me? I really don't want to bother her. She seems like a nice lady. I don't want to have her involved in our problems, so... Of course, dear. Good luck with your case. She gives you a small wave. Thank you, ma'am. You've been very, very helpful and uh, sorry for bothering you. You have no idea where you are? Then, uh, encourage you to ask others to explain the world to you in greater detail. Perhaps try a rich person. We don't know any rich people. Okay. Well, let's see if the wind has died down. That certainly didn't help earlier. I don't know, this looks pretty bad. Gosh darn Kuno. 
There's the logo of the municipality of Revachol. This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says, whirling in rags. Right. Uh, key, key. Where's my key? Leave. Where's my key? Items. Didn't we have the key? I thought we had the key. Key to trash container. Yeah. This trash container ah, there is, is with a well-oiled crack. The lock pops open. It should now be possible to simply raise the lid. Don't. Maybe you shouldn't. Let's see. What's this? Just the feeling. A warning from some part of you. Let's do it anyway. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. Okay, nothing unusual. We're just in time. This hasn't been emptied for over a week. Look at the bod look under the boxes of carton. You see milk and egg rest with one broken egg in it. Some pasta wrapper. Picking up the soggy packages somehow feels familiar. A box falls into pieces in your hands. A tea sole cereal. There are plastic pasta packages below. And turbo noodles. Nothing of note, however. Uh, pick up the rags. Among the threadbare kitchen towels, something catches your eye. A pair of denim trousers. Try it? As the legs of the slime-covered jeans begin to unspool from the garbage, a rank corpse smell fills the air. The victim's clothes? <laughs> Cadaverine odor is faint. If these belong to the deceased, they were removed when he was still in the early stages of decay. Yeah, he is pretty naked. Drop them in here, officer. The lieutenant produces a black plastic bag marked evidence from his pocket. Guitar marked blue jeans. Pocket. Empty. Or emptied. He wore them with a belt, too. A white belt. The loops appear stretched, but... He looks into the container. The belt is missing. That's it. Do you see anything else in there? I have another bag here. Something slimy catches your eye. Reach for it. A drab, long-sleeved shirt, olive-colored, appears from the food waste, dripping with pus. Bag the shirt. This is a military-type overgarment. No label or serial number. This is the kind of rib-knit shirt that's worn over light armor to conceal it in an urban scenario. Anything more? The rest of the rags are just kitchen variety waste. A yellow old mug that catches your eye. But other than that... A thrown out towel, a mug, that's all. All right. We should go to Gart again and ask if he knows who put the clothes in the trash. It could be as simple as someone from the hostel cleaning the yard. Or that one. I'd advise against confronting that force. Yeah, I don't want to talk to the kids either, but I doubt the kids have anything to do with this. Uh, we need to ask who the kids who put we need to ask the kids who put them there. You think someone from the Whirling Inn might have been involved, maybe? I don't think that's... Eh, we should try these. The fuck's he on about? Kids! You hear that, Kuno? He thinks you're an infant or something. You're an infant. You are. See? <laughs> yeah, I see it. Not really. All we know is the victim's clothes are in the trash, the lid was locked, and his establishment had the key. It's just a small loose thread. Yeah, oh well. The lieutenant nods, then looks back into the trash container. Uh, search the food waste. Let's see what else is, um... Let's see what else we can find. It's just organic waste, cold and slimy on your hands. Apple and potato pills, mostly. Unidentified sludge and the occasional chicken bone thrown in for good measure. But hey, what's this? What? A blue piece of plastic sticks out from the apple peels. It's shiny. Looks like the corner of something. Pick it out. Something larger. A clipboard. A blue plastic clipboard with moist papers hanging from it. They look badly damaged, but you can still make out forms and notes. Written in a man's handwriting. Officer, is that your 
Paperwork? I don't know what this is. It is. Look. The plastic has the RCM street grid on it. You've even got an autopsy form in there. Why would we be doing the trash? A miserable looking slip of paper sticks to the board. If you don't mind me asking, how did this get in the trash? It must have been cramping my style. <laughs> uh, it has a foreboding quality to it. Maybe I needed to lose it for the greater bloodletting to begin? I didn't. Th I think I didn't want to be a cop anymore, so I threw it away. Someone from the whirling threw it in the trash? I don't know. I'm boring. I'd rather not talk about it right now. I. I don't know. I. I I feel like someone from the whirling threw in the trash. Maybe. Boring. Try dangerous. You should do a thorough inventory of that. Be sure some has not fallen into the hands of the RCM's enemies, organized crime, or worse. Official notes sometimes contain informants' names, even undercover operatives. Okay, I'll do that. Say nothing. I don't know, man. Sounds like an order. I don't take those. Okay, I'll do that. It would also not hurt to start taking notes on the case. Now, tell me what your eagle eyes see. Or are we finished? Some items, such as the ledger you found, are interactable. Go to your inventory and select the interact tab to read your paperwork. Let's see, the mug. I'm getting that mug too. You pick out a broken mug with an oddly racist depiction of the yellow man frolicking in saffron. An antique? Only in its social sensibility. I guess we're still taking the mug. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. The lieutenant briefly glances at the mug, then returns his sight to the trash. You've acquired an interactable item. Investig- The container sounds a muffled gong. Alright, let's close it. That's one thing off the list. I think we got it all. Uh, leave. Okay, a few things. Who put the clothes in the trash? Ask Kuno if he knows anything. Ask Gart if he knows anything. Oh, well, Kuno's right there. But do I really want to talk to Kuno? This case needs an official name. Go to your inventory and interact with the ledger. All right. Ledger. Ledger. Oh, the mug. This broken-eared mug somehow made its way into the whirling in rags dumpster. It depicts a person of Samaritan descent, frolicking in the field of saffron flowers. Bucktooth and grinning feeble-mindedly, it seems to be a cheap knockoff of some colonial-era antique. Interact? It's just a racist mug. What's there to read here? Not much. There's quite a lot to read into here, actually. Look at all that content. Oh boy. Here we go. <laughs> what are you going to say about a broken, tossed away mug that you dug out of the garbage? This mug is an example of prejudice. I'm going to use it as an example of what not to do. I'm going to push this into the face of every merchant I find and tell them this is your inane ideology. The mug will be useful. By denouncing it, I can earn political capital to mask my bad ass hustling, i.e., fraud and embezzlement. <laughs> The mug didn't belong in the trash. It was just a funny mug. Can't anyone laugh anymore? Uh, I don't know. Uh, let's see. The mug use will be useful for denouncing fraud and embezzlement. Let's try if that. If you want to earn some change by guilting people, go for it. But if you want to earn real dough, finish the case and start getting paid again. Understood, yellow mug. All right. The actual thing we need to interact with. It's the legend found in the trash. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hanging from plastic board, barely held together by a metal clip. This sad display is made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Of what? Uh, urinal... You mean urinal cleaner? Okay. Anything else? There's a piece of toilet paper, or is it cleaning tissue? No. It's toilet paper, desperately sticking to the back of the blue plastic clipboard. It's a metaphor for you. Inspect the toilet paper, inspect the clip. Browse the white papers, browse the yellow papers. I, uh, inspect the toilet paper. It's just toilet paper sticking to the back of the plastic clipboard. 
You can take it off if you want. Maybe it's kitchen tissue. They look exactly the same. Just take it off. Still wet, the toilet paper peels off the plastic easily. All you have to do is shake it off with your finger and voila. The ledger now looks marginally better. Inspect the clip. An aluminium block runs the width of the board, biting down on the paperwork. Its crocodile teeth are the only thing keeping the papers together. A regular pencil, the tip worn down to nothing, has been attached to the clip. Run your finger across that aluminium. The surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's rectangular, sparkling with iridescence. You don't know how you didn't notice it before. Hey, Lieutenant, what is this? Point to the sticker. What? That thing. It's a halogen watermark. We use it for adding information to RCM property. Let's see. Interesting. What kind of information? It depends. Aside from an anti-counterfeiting stamp, mine has my station number and address. The information varies by date of issue. Maybe yours will have how many cases you've solved. How can I read it? Any capable light with the right wavelength will do. Like, for example? All RCM vehicles have headlights designed to reveal halogen watermarks. Mine too. Okay, we can try that later. This means you can read the watermarks if you just turn the lights on. That's all, thank you. Okay. He returns to his neatly kept notes. While a bunch of sodden papers sag from the clipboard in your hand, it's a sorry sight. Browse the white papers. They're not exactly white. They're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink escapes into watercolor patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The paper itself is checkered with faint red lines forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, case files commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organized and extremely dense, if mostly illegible. What is in there? What are they about? Work, strife, poverty, the Jamrock Quarter. These are handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51, this year. The exact number is hard to estimate, due to missing pages and an odd naming convention. But there are at least 20, maybe 30 cases, undertaken, not completed, mind you. Oh my, that's a lot of cases not solved. It's the middle of March. You have attempted two cases a week on average. That seems quite a bit, actually. Two, is two cases a week a good caseload, Lieutenant? There was a mention of a naming convention here. Count the pages. Have I... I have to open an official case. Is there room? Let's see. Huh? Two complex cases to undertake is a lot, yes. You really have to push yourself. I would not suggest it, lest you start making mistakes. I wonder if he actually used to be good. Two cases a week... Appears to have been my load, Lieutenant. I'm not sure I completed them, though. Two? That's a lot. I didn't mean to say you are making mistakes, by the way. That was presumptuous of me. I'm sure I made plenty of mistakes. I burned out all right. A nice, brisk pace, the way I like it. I burned out all right. That's okay. We all do, sooner or later. Like a fan of girls, the checkered papers dry in your hand. The handwriting is extremely dense if mostly illegible. See, naming convention. Yes, it appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet literary system. Each investigation has its case number written on the margins. Yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. A title, one might say even. One that draws inspiration from snoop fiction and vespertine cop show staples. Let me guess, uh, this case is called Disco Elysium? Is that what it is? I'm still wondering whether Disco Elysium uh, falls in. Oh my, and they're written in capital letters too. Yes, all caps. One is called The Next World Mural. Another, The Square Bullet Hole Murders. Another yet, The Unsolvable Case. Pretty standard. Others appear more light-hearted. The guys on a couch in an unexpected location, and 
the murder at the Ukar parlor, even the rare Article 3 collapsing tenement. Murder features prominently throughout. Makes sense. It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together, but it can be done. Oh. Once you're done inspecting them up close. I don't think we need to tell Kim about this, but uh, let's see what he says. You mean the alphanumeric? Officer, precinct, time of arrival at the scene? Uh, no, I mean non-numeric one, with titles. Oh, you mean the titular? Yes, well, so do I. In our defense, almost everyone in the RCM does. Why is that? It's a holdover from the early days of the RCM, right after the revolution, when the organization had little idea how to do things. It persists in an unofficial capacity. Officers use these titles to refer to their work among themselves. Huh. So it's actually not something crazy he did. He did. Gotcha. I seem to have named a case the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Again, in your defense, I seem to have named one the man with the hole in his head. That was a real person. His death was real. Still, I named it that to amuse myself. <laughs> well, okay. Well, at least we're on the same page there, Lieutenant. Thank you, Kim. I pray his loved ones never find out. What happened to him? Rail spiked through the head. He died. It was a workplace accident. That's quite the accident. Count the pages. Have I... I have to open an official case. Is there room? There is, for precisely one more. Fifteen pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms a structure of passages, breaking the case into subtasks to accomplish. Yeah, it's the same subtasks I have right now, right? Once all the tasks are accomplished, the case is complete. Commit to paper. Sadly, the letter only comes with an old, worn-down lead pencil. It's unfitting of this monumental event. Kim, do you have a pen? The lieutenant looks at his blue notebook. Two fat, shiny pens hang from the binder, like large caliber bullets on an ammo belt. He is not really saying anything, just standing there, looking at them. Fine, I'll just use this crappy pencil. Absolutely motionless at first, then animated slowly, imperceptibly even. The lieutenant begins to browse his notes again, leaving you to the case files. Onto the paper with a brash free hand, uncannily similar to the rest of the letters. The wording comes easily. It's almost robotically simple. A language developed for mental rigor and simplicity. Inspect the victim's body. Yeah, we're doing that right now. Interview the cafeteria manager. It's not exactly poetry, but poetry would be out of place. Cross out the ones you've already finished. A satisfying slash sounds across the paper. You're done, it seems to say. And you, and you. Nice. Things to be done, and things already done. The composition of reality. This is an extremely useful tool for a detective of the citizen's militia. Now all that remains is to name the case. Lieutenant, have you by any chance named our case? No, actually. Any ideas? The Hanged Man. The Furies are at home in the mirror. The Setting Sun. Shit on a stick. Actually, I don't have one. Oh, well, then maybe I can suggest one. Eh, uh, go ahead. The Hanged Man. Solid name. That's idiotic. Mockingly, the hanged man. Way too simple. I'm not really feeling it, though. Are you sure? I think it's pretty serviceable. Yeah, not feeling it. Okay, then. The case doesn't need to have a name. Let's see. I'm done inspecting these for you now. You don't exactly close them. So much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. They're a little further from your nose now. Can I read the case files? We should be able to. Yes, you can piece them together using the alphanumeric code on the margin. It always begins with HDB41, then date of initialization and time of arrival on the scene, followed by the title. Wait. For example, HDB41201177. The next world mural. Wait, weren't those officer precinct? Why, yes, 
Your precinct number is 41. An HBD? Every last alphanumeric in the files begins with it. And these are your case files. It's safe to say HDB are your initials. Oh, we got a name now. Horace Debbie Berwinger. Ram Dajan Byzantian. Those are my initials. I'm not feeling them. Horace Debbie Berwinger. These are silly names. We don't we we're not gonna claim either one of those. Wow, I don't know what to say. I got nothing here either. Logic really isn't the best faculty to have this conversation with. But it's the one you got. So sorry. How long does it take to read a case? It takes about half an hour to piece one together using the system you've devised. Where do you want to start? Uh, the next world mural. This one is relatively easy to reconstruct. Overnight on 1202, a graffito, nay, a mural, appears on an eight-story tenement overlooking central Jamrock. The building is a sparsely inhabited ghost tower, part of a failed real estate development called Grand Couron. Cause of failure, rent too high. Fair enough. The mural is enormous. Two silhouettes, a man and a woman, are kissing. The text cut into their form reads, True love is possible only in the next world. For new people, it is too late for us. Wreak havoc on the middle class. People call it that thing and that fucking thing. It's visible for miles. In two days, the station's complaints desk gets clogged with requests to remove the bummer. You and your partner are assigned to the case. The graffito crew is easy to track down. Only the bell lectures have the literage of industrial paint to cover the surface. One of the graffito artists is rumored to be rich. They take responsibility for the execution, but not the design. The ideologue of the next world mural, as the crew calls it, remains an unknown. Wait, do I ever find out who came up with it? Uh... The case files do not show you finding the author of the design. I see. Read on. The crew agrees to clean up after themselves. However, your partner, JV, is against the removal, citing public support for conservation. This leads to a debate in Precinct 41, which then spreads to the streets of Jamrock, ending in a rare plebiscite organized by you and the rest of row three. Okay. The 9,000 people subjected to the mural's message, all of Lakeside, Central Jamrock, and Villa Lobos, plus half of the eminent domain, participate in the vote. Although the case begins with what appears to be a lot of rambling on the streets as to how juvenile and stupid the mural is, given a choice between two options. The mural... Two silhouettes, a man and a woman, are kissing. The text cut into their hands forms. True love is only possible in the next world for new people. It is too late for us. Uh, remove the mural. It is wrong. A staggering 78% of voters choose to keep it. Turns out the opposition were a loud minority. And that love truly is possible in the next world for new people. And it is too late for us. All that remains is to wreak havoc in the middle class. The middle class are not to be blamed. It's human nature. I like it, but can't we wreak havoc on other nations instead? I must have voted and possibly even lobbied to remove the thing because I don't believe in that rubbish one bit. No one cares what you believe in, man <laughs> with the smelly toilet ledger. What do you want to tackle next? Or are we done? Uh, let's see. Unsolvable case. Not much has changed in the meanwhile. A bunch of sodden papers still sags from the clipboard. Well, I guess we don't need to know anything about the other cases for now. So let's see. Read the yellow papers. What's in the yellow papers? In the back, you see thin, translucent copy of paper. Some neon yellow, some bright red. All covered in boxes, like marching armies. These look like official forms waiting to be filled out. Then rip them from the binder and hand them out, according to type of form. What types of forms are there? Three. The topmost are misconduct fines, 
The middle ones are station cores, and the bottommost are field autopsy forms. Each is easy enough to make sense of. You don't have to be an intellectual giant to do police work. Let's see. I see that it is already 1304. That means the kitchen is open and... The rest of the stinking cellulose is much worse for wear. Being sandwiched between the board and the rest of the paperwork must have spared the fragile copy of paper. Also, the wind has died down significantly. So let's see if we can get this body down first and then maybe we can... Maybe we can uh, do something about the case files later. There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body <laughs> below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. Shit compressed. I see. All right. Well, we can take it down now, finally. As you breathe in, the odor comes over you. It's a smell of the mind telling you to run and your stomach to wring itself empty. With your hands at your sides and your eyes squinting, you stand in it. Do they always do that? They do after seven days, yes. We are deep in decomposition here. Okay. The man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and enamel boots. His skin is greenish, marbled with decaying veins and blotched by lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The cargo belt used to fasten him to the branch above appears industrial in strength. Inspect the boots. The material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. Delicate and fragile. They feel alien to the world around you. Out of place somehow. These are clearly not boots. They're armor. Possibly part of a larger set. Yeah, they do look like uh, the armor knights would use. Aren't these just boots? These aren't just boots, are they? This is the armor he was stripped off of. Indeed. Technically speaking, these are sabatons, not boots. This is true. What kind of armor is this exactly? Ceramic plate. Zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is where the make would be. Where? Under the hill. Fair weather. Fair weather model T500VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. Where's the rest of it? Scavenged by the locals? The material looks out of place here. Uh, knock on the boot, pull off the boot. Where's the rest? Piece by piece. He's been out here for seven days. It would be odd if they didn't. We should keep a lookout for these species. The armor could yield information. This is one thing he might actually know. Kuno, I see. Maybe he was just wearing these boots and there's no rest of the armor. I don't think so. He would probably have armor also. No, I think he had something precious underneath the clothes. They had to remove the jeans and shirt we found to get to it. And this kind of armor is often worn under fabrics. Really? Nice. That makes sense. What if they told him to strip before they hung him, to demean him? He could have been walking around naked, just like this for all we know. Nah, to demean him. They usually hang them completely naked for that. La puta madre, the Mazda, the Besmertis and the like. This one still has his underpants. <laughs> Fucking talking about underpants. Clearly, Kuno would like to interject something here, but there's not enough for him to hold on to. The material looks out of place here. It is. It's expensive. The lieutenant draws a line that condensation on the ceramic with his index finger. We've requested similar material for our tactical units for years now. The constabulary has deemed it too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi-automatics. How much are we talking about? For a full set, about four years of wages. Woo! That's expensive. For the northwest region of Revachol, an <clears> officer's <throat> average yearly income is 5,500 real, unadjusted for rank. 
Wait, my yearly pay is 5,500 a year? Ka-ching, baby. Nod to the boots. That's a lot, I take it. As a wage, it's regrettably small. But for a piece of hardware, yes, that's a lot. Let's see... How could this man afford such expensive hardware? That's for us to find out. My initial report on the area suggests he was a security guard for the Harbor Company. But that's just hearsay. Initial report? Just something I scraped together from my station. An area report on Martinez. I'm sure you did the same. They look pretty advanced for a security guard. I agree. This equipment is way beyond what a guard can afford. Knock on the boot. A small bell-like sound fills the air. Like tapping on the side of a porcelain cup. Sounds fragile. It's anything but. This material is a kinetic redistributor. It spreads kinetic energy horizontally from plate to plate, dissipating it entirely. See? Points the boots. Faint organic lines cover the plates where they separate into smaller ones. These plates then divide into smaller plates until there are hundreds of them altogether. Okay, so it looks like one big lump of mass right now, but it's actually has smaller stuff. Like whirls of floorboards, the design looks organic. Influenced by highly resistant wood materials, like lignum vitae and ebony, perhaps. What does it remind me of? If trees were made of porcelain, this is what their cross-sections would look like. Run your finger over the lines. The smooth, glossy surface fractures into ever more intricate interconnections, peaking on the right sabaton, where you notice. The whirls are in the shape of a letter and number combination, E50-100. 1,000. Looks like there's a serial number on the right sabaton. Good. Can you read it to me? Da 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 da. Uh, he tips the drying ball point of his pen to his tongue. We have a make and a number. That's something. We can use the radio in my kinema when we're done. Either station can chase it for us. Pull off the boot. The stench fills your nostrils. As you push downward, an ominous creaking sound comes from above. Should get down now. Stop! The lieutenant's voice is sharp. He looks at you with a boot under your arm. Pig's gonna pull his head off. Abrezzo! Oh, this is a bad idea, isn't it? You're going to pull his head off. Do it, homo! Let's see. I'm not gonna pull his head off, right? Yes, that's what I said. You'll compromise the coroner's case if you do. So please, don't. Indeed, from this angle, it does look like the neck isn't going to take much more. Being dead for a week has all but liquefied his muscles. That makes some sense. What are you trying to achieve anyway? Why are you hanging on to that boot? Uh, these boots would go super well with my belt button pants. Yeah, let's not, let's not. As much as we want to be like chaotic, a tiny bit chaotic, um, not a good idea. This advanced enemy technology, we should conduct research into their weakness. Hmm, not our job. Are we not detectives? There may be clues inside the boot. You said they're expensive. I thought I could pawn them off or in some lucre. I'm sorry, I didn't even want to take them off. I just thought I should try. I didn't even want to take them off. I thought I should try. I just thought I should try. Try what exactly? If you can't experiment, how will you learn? I wanted to see what happens. I might have wanted to experiment, you know. Get an exploratory jive going on. I have no idea. I just want to do things. There's no underlying reason. Hmm. Exploratory. I see what you mean. But even so... The lieutenant taps on the boot. There's no way you're getting them off. All the organic matter in his body has been flowing down into the boots. They are fused to his feet now. Why do you think the locals haven't scavenged them yet? I guess that... I, I didn't even think of that. There might still be a way to peel them off. But first, the body needs to be down. And second, it would probably be better if the lieutenant wasn't around. Steal a dead man's boots, but that would be dishonorable. Refuse for honor. <laughs> uh, sounds like a plan. The anticipation makes you crack your fingers. Feels nice. Nice and cracky. Okay, got it. Processing will take care of them. With the situation in the morgue, it will yield nothing. 
but we must pick our fight. Should we continue? Uh, back off the corpse. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his it's... torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. Let's check the belt. The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard-edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, a sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch. This is a steel-reinforced cargo lashing belt. Big brother of the regular cargo belt is used for tying cargo under six rotor airships. Pretty darn strong. Don't ask me how I know, but this is a lashing belt used for airlifting cargo. Airlifting? I thought it was used on lorries for strapping cargo to them. Apparently there's a reinforced kind for air transport. My b brain tells me so. Then again, what do I know? I don't even know what an airship is. <laughs> Uh, let's try let's try the first one. The local harbor uses six rotors to shuffle containers around. I get the sense they use whatever was on hand without paying much attention to not incriminating themselves. We're assuming dock workers from the harbor did it? They sure want him to stay up there. The rope is reinforced with steel wiring. How do they even get them up there? Uh, it makes sense. There's some stairs here. Uh, let's see. We're assuming the dock workers from the harbor did it? I'm still approaching this as a lynching, yes. Motivated by the ongoing strike. You? Makes sense. Believably mundane. I feel like it was something else. Don't ask me, I'm just lumbering from one moment to the next. Believably mundane. 70% of the cases I get are just filling in the blanks on the initial report. This belt worries me. They sure want to stay... They sure wanted him to stay up there. I was afraid it would be. Thin steel wiring, parallel strands. This makes getting him down more problematic than I had assumed. How do they even get him up there? A noose is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. He points to the buckle, tying the belt to the branch above. Did they climb up using the kid's ladder? That ladder can't carry a grown man. I didn't see any splintering either, did you? I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled on the belt to close the buckle. Huh. Could be. The shape of the branch supports the theory. Let's see. The cadaver hangs from the cargo belt. Let's check the Limbs limp and torso covered in tattoos. They have so much text for the same scene. It's amazing, actually. Let's inspect the tattoos. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso. From the right shoulder to the solar plexus, each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. Is this a map of the night sky? A map of the stars? I do see some similarity to astronomical charts. Great century Messinian, maybe. But this seems more particular customized somehow. Interesting tattoo there. As if someone left out most of the night sky, filtering it through personal choice. The principle of this filter remains unknown to you. The thought dissipates, and you feel as though you were only half right. I'm missing something here. So am I. A sudden ringing fills the air as the lieutenant pulls down the zipper of his orange jacket. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. What's that? A Trigat Sunshine. Mini. Trigat is the world's leading manufacturer of intercommunication devices, primarily projectors. The camera before you looks familiar somehow. Shit, Kuno! What the fuck is that? Uh, no, Kuno. What do you think? An instant color camera. He produces two metal cap ampules and clicks them into place on the side of the apparatus. A thin slot shines there. Oh, so it's like um, some kind of Polaroid. I have only two ampules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. He points the camera at the corpse, peering into it. The lens needs adjusting. Then... A sound. Ooh. A shrill flash 
followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper rolling out. And it comes out like this? Wow, that's um, amazing, actually. If, imagine that, instant painting for a photograph uh, compared to your usual realistic um, camera shots. This is amazing, actually. In case we need it. The lieutenant says and shakes the paper, laying it dry in the cold wind. On it, a color-perfect copy of the dead man's tattooed chest. Cool machine. What do we need this photo for? Cool machine. Yes, it is pretty cool, isn't it? What do we need this photo for? It contains insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter. To us. Someone should decipher it. We'll need to show it around. Let's see. Can I have it? I should look at it later without the corpse smell. Mm, I think he's gonna keep it. Sure. Just don't lose it. Okay, well, good thing you're so trusting, Kim. Thank you. Uh, he hands you the piece of rolled up photo paper. It's no larger than a pack of cigarettes. Oh, that's actually kind of small. The glossy eyed corpse looks by, his mouth mute, and his skin as colorful as the chemical rainbow on the photo paper, teeming with opportunistic organisms. Look him in the eye. His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. There is no one home, just sub-aquatic terrors there. Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. The death's head grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. Tell me, who are you, dead man? It's 42%. I'm hoping it's, uh, not... I'm hoping I, my morale doesn't go down. I'm gone. Wow, we actually passed that check. Holy crap. Where have you gone? Into the wild pile yonder. Where is that? In the past. Way out in the west. I can see you're gone, but who are you? I'm a joke. Look at me. There's nothing funny about you. You are now, but who were you when you were alive? A killer. A motherfucker. And a killer. I have another question for you. Go ahead, Kobo. What is happening? <laughs> what do you mean? I'm talking to you. It's the power of your... Black, frothy liquid starts bubbling on his lips. Wait. Do we have something? Imagination. Okay, well... I mean, that can make sense. Go ahead. Ask me more questions. You fucking love questions. Darn right. Why do I love questions so much? Because you're a copperoonie. Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? Ah, give me a comical amount of questions. Coming right up, copperoonie <laughs> rooney. This is getting a beat now. Is my name Rooney? Fuck no. You're no Rooney. I do strike myself as a Rooney. Rooney is obviously who I am not. Between you and me, your name is probably... Harry. I feel like I've been getting a lot of Harry lately. No, it can't be Harry. I refuse. Could I really be Harry? Could I really be Harry? You can be anything you want. Brother Corpo. Let's see. Why do I feel like I've forgotten something terrible? Because you have. Who killed you? Love did me in, Brother Corpo. It was love all along. Okay. 
Can you ask me a question? Sure, Lobo. I can ask you a question. Why are you doing this? What? Looking at my face, motionless. Looking into my eyes, standing here. Why are you investigating my murder? I don't have anything else to do. This is this case is all I have. Because he told me to nod towards Kim. Maybe this will lead to something. Something indescribable. Unforeseen. Miraculous? <sighs> the clown lips on the corpse appear to smile. The face rotates before you, slowly. Something is on its way. Something hidden. It's coming. A miracle from the northwest. And it's almost here. You can feel it in the air, on your hands. The cold spring air smoothing them over. I hate you, you stink, and you're boring. We're not gonna go there. Enough. Come back later, Corpo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also, see me in your dreams. That is not what the text here says. But okay. Squint and stick, take a step back. As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. This is a trick. You've done it before. Pink is where the blood settled in the first hours post-mortem. You can use it to see if the corpse has been tampered with. Does his position at the time of death match the discoloration? Well, let's see. Only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue. His fatted hands, thighs, and his neck, just above the noose. The rest of the corpse appears dark green in the cold spring air. His face and hands are pink. Thighs, too. I see it. His neck, too. The lividity goes right up his chin. We have good, well-pronounced discoloration here. Relax your eyes. The monster comes back into focus. An explosion of color, coursing with dark marbled veins. His stomach appears pregnant with something. Black liquid streams down his thigh and onto his boot. So, what do you think? I think he said... <laughs> Uh, I think he's dead. Yeah, that's kind of obvious. I think he was upright after death. His hands, feet, and neck are discolored. Yeah. They would be upright because uh, blood comes rushing down. The pink is down. Cover your nose. Something is coming out of him. He's beaten up. See the bruises? I don't see any bruises. He was upright after death. Agreed. Especially on the neck. The belt acted like a tourniquet, keeping the blood in his head. The hypostasis supports a hanging. Seems like a lynching to me. I don't know if it's, it supports a lynching, but... Could it be he was moved after death? No. Maybe he was strangled by someone? No. Yep, seems like a lynching to me. That's the only thing I can think of. Everything here seems to corroborate that assumption. But we should still get him down before assigning a probable cause of death. Okay. He's beaten up. See the bruises? I do. Most of them are post-mortem. Maybe even all of them. The delinquents have made our jobs harder with their little spot. This is true. Stop talking in riddles, coin slot. Kuno, you better get home. Otherwise, you're going to get a huge banking. It means you fucked him up good, Kuno. Fucked him up brutal-like. You're a girl? Man, you're one ugly girl. But there is no breath to catch, only the cadaver filling the air and your nostrils. He slowly rotates before you, decomposing. How do we get him down? Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss some of these things once he's done. Let's see... Let's just check again. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos, and extremities blotched pink and blue. I have something I need to know, corpse man. Of course. You have questions, don't you? The power of your imagination is at your service. I hate you. 
You stink and you're boring. Do I remind you of someone? A child born with Muller's disease, Harlequinism, grown up miraculously. A deep sea creature, myself, and the bathroom mirror. Yeah, you kind of look like that. A baby affected by Harlequinism. Me, in the bathroom mirror. There you go. Look at that bright kid. We're birds of a feather, you and I. Soon you'll be just like me. Just keep drinking and having a good time. It's a matter of weeks. Matter of weeks, you say? Feeling nausea? Vomiting? Tenderness or pain around the liver area? Tiny red lines on the skin above waist level? More like days, Coppo. The clock is ticking. Your liver tells you so. Uh, enough. Come back later, Coppo. Yep. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also, see me in your dreams. Okay, let's, uh, let's bring him down. Hmm. The steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. He doesn't actually think the challenge is unique. He thinks it's frustrating, annoying, and harder than he thought. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there's the question of cutting the airship strength material. That's true. Can't someone else do it? Someone else? You mean like the police? <laughs> what was that about processing then? Weren't they supposed to take care of the boots? Why don't they help? Can't the boys from Processing take care of this? No. Why? Think of the boys from Processing as murderers. Only instead of people, they murder crime scenes. Processing is a wrecking crew. They know how to commission off items and how to work the incinerator in the morgue. I know it's hard, but I assure you, the others won't come to help us. And we have a growing sanitary concern here. We need to get him down, fast. I could saw the branch. Climb up there and saw the branch? Yeah, it seems dangerous. There has to be a less risky way, with less falling down of trees. Seems like a hassle, let's not do it. Maybe we could shoot him down, nope. Maybe we can ask for some help from the harbor. I don't think they will cooperate, but let's try. I was really hoping we wouldn't. The Union appeared to be suspect in this case. It seems like a dangerous route to go down. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I would really prefer if there was another way. These people might have an agenda. Yeah, let's wait. Let's reconsider. But what other options? The corpse twists on the belt, like chicken on a skewer. Uh, I'm out of ideas. Let's have a look and ha let's have another look at him. Hmm. Can you talk about getting him down? Yes, we do. Seems like a hassle. Let's not do it. Maybe we could shoot him down. Yeah! Bang bang time, pig! Shoot his head off! How? Where the buckle ties the rope to the branch. That's a good spot to aim. That's actually a good idea. There, the buckle holds the belt together. I don't know, just, you know, shoot up there maybe, point towards the branch, shoot the belt, the bullet will break it. Where? Ah, yes, I see. If the shot hits that, there might be a chance to release the belt. Yeah, now we're talking. Entertain the Kuno with some shit. They'll miss. The pigs will miss Kuno. Can these kids please shut up? They are so annoying. Also, I got a skill point. Let's see. I think our intellect is pretty darn good. What's volition again? Keep your morale up. Savoir faire. Sneak under their noses. Stun their immense panache. I don't know what else to... put points into. Maybe... Suggestion. Authority, assert yourself, empathy. 
I'm gonna keep my points for now just in case I need it for something specific. What's the case look like? Watermarks? Okay, we need to look at the watermarks on our thing. Ask Kuno what he knows. Yeah, later. Run the number of the victim's armor. Okay, we're gonna have to call that in. Get boots off victims somehow. Ask around about tattoos possible meaning. Somehow make it so that the bloated corpse isn't up there anymore. Shoot it down or ask for help. Understood. That's what I'm trying to do right now. What's my inventory look like? Well, I can't check my inventory, so... Take the shot, Lieutenant. What's the worst thing that could happen? I actually don't. It has... It has bad idea written over it. Let me try. I don't have a gun. Say nothing, let him choose. Hmm. Yeah, what's the worst that could happen? I'll blow his head off. Take it! Take the shot! Buzz off, Kuno Ease. Yeah, take the shot! Kuno wants some of that shit! Silence. With his elbow sharp, the lieutenant unzips his jacket and produces a lightweight <laughs> firearm. He drops a paper cartridge in the barrel, separates the scouring stick, and gives the cartridge five tucks. That's a Kiel A9090 armistice. Mass-produced muzzle loader, ascetic, frugal, one of the most common firearms in the world. He then steps back and assumes the fellow Stess position, taking aim. The corner of his eye twitches. His finger is on the trigger. Easy does it, partner. He's gonna fucking miss! The kid's voice is drowned in a shrill blast that echoes off the walls of the surrounding tenements. A cloud of smoke slowly parts in the air as the lieutenant steps back and says to himself, God damn it. He missed. Fucking idiot! Mukaba asshole! Kuno could have hit it easy, but then Kuno's not fucking handicapped, is he? <sighs> what now? I have to say, it's beginning to look unlikely we can get him down without assistance. Can I have the gun? I should try. It's bad as it is, us shooting firearms like punks. He pauses then shrugs and proceeds to load the pistolet. Go ahead, I'm not stopping you. Just don't lose it. The piece shines in his outstretched hand. <laughs> I only have one gun! This is the sorriest pair of pigs Kuno's ever seen. Yeah, take it, you fucking banani poika! Take it and shoot yourself in the mouth! Feel the weight first, and Kuno, stop it. I am going to... The cold piece of Bakelite and gunmetal is surprisingly light. Your fingers fit right through the guard, instinctively resting on the trigger. The fuck are you waiting for, Kuno? Tell him to shoot himself in the mouth! Point the gun at the belt. The buckle comes into focus in your sights. You stand with your feet planted firmly in the ground, and your left hand supporting your gun arm. Why don't you just shoot yourself in your f mouth? Mm. This won't miss. Hand eye coordination. What if I increase hand eye coordination? Is that gonna help? Let's give it a shot. I probably could put the points somewhere more useful. But let's see if it helps any. If it doesn't, I don't think it's gonna be that bad of a thing. 42% even. I don't like my sh chances, to be honest. Point the gun at Kuno S. I would love to. I really would love to. Alright, let's take a chance. 42% is not great, but let's take a chance. Actually, no. I really don't like my chances. Shut up. You're gonna fuck me? You wanna fuck me, pig? Is that what this is about? Kid, don't test me right now. I am really, really this close. Really, really this close. To close the left eye first. Your field of view narrows. The branch slowly moves. 
becoming entirely two-dimensional. The metal buckle glimmers, catching the noon light as the corpse slowly rotates. The slow movement of the branch in the wind and your shoulders directing the gun sink up, dancing hypnotically. Look, he's crying! You gonna cry now, fucking faggoty? 58% is a little bit better. Let's try it. A plume of smoke erupts from the barrel. Your hand goes numb from the explosion. With your ears That's still ringing, good. you lower the weapon to see what happened. You missed the belt, but hit the corpse straight in the chest. Bits of ribcage protrude from the skin. No blood, only a murky sludge dripping down his belly. The sudden stink makes your eyes water. And I hope the 58% was good enough. That was actually really bad. Oh my god, he's gonna fucking cry! I knew it! What a mulco! Ask for another shot. You'll get it with the next one. The goddamn light reflected off some window. Surely. <sighs> Start crying, you're sensitive? No. Don't want to do this anymore. This is boring. That's probably the wrong thing. Can you reroll it, please? I need another shot. The cadaver is already compromised bad enough. We don't have to make it worse. It came out wrong. You made it sound like you're some sort of roulette addict looking for a fix. Ask again. More control this time. Swallow defeat. Feels like shit, man. How did this happen? Hit him straight in the chest. How horrible. You're so sorry. I am sorry. That was really bad. Uh, I don't want to do this anymore. This is boring. Something's wrong with your weapon, Lieutenant. It keeps missing. <laughs> We're both bad shots. The armistice is sufficiently precise, officer. Especially at close range. It's not the gun's fault you can't shoot. It's your pig hands. Okay, Kuno. Maybe I should have shot you instead. Uh, pigs don't have hands. They have, like... Fucking hooves or something. Kuno has hands. Kuno can shoot that shit down for you. No, Kuno. If I can't shoot him down, no one will. Lieutenant, we couldn't trust Kuno with your service weapon. He says they can shoot it down. Nope. That's preposterous. We're not giving the gun to you, kid. Uh. No, Kuno. If I can't shoot him down, no one will. Cop's bitter because he fucked that corpse up, Kuno. What a fucking good pillar! We still need to get him down somehow. But how? Well, we had kinda have to go to the dock, don't we? His tone is growing tired now. The stench make him turn away from the corpse. The bad way. The way I didn't want us to. <sighs> By asking the harbor for help. They have the tools and the men. If they put him up there, they can take him down too. But won't it be dangerous? To ask the suspect for help with the victim's body? To be indebted to Everard Clare? Very much, yes. Which is why I would have preferred us to handle this ourselves. Clearly we can't. Clearly we can't. Suck my dick, bitches! Who's Everard Clare? The leader of the Union. A dangerous and corrupt man, from what I hear. You don't want to owe him much. Or anything. Yeah, don't go being someone else's bitches. Your kunos, bitches. How do we get inside the harbor? Well, I think I know, but let's see if he has any other insights. From the gates, by negotiating or fighting. I'm unenthusiastic about fighting. Or we can try to find some secret third path. It's unlikely, though. To the gates. Let's negotiate. Okay. Well, that was fruitful. Not really, but okay, let's get to it then. All right, well, we started off with the dead body today, trying to get it down, and we ended trying to still get the dead body down today. And it didn't work out too well. I would like to ask some people some questions. However, 
we're probably going to have to save it for next time. This recording is surprisingly taken about two hours now, actually. And if my editing from last time is anything, I don't think I can cut much from this session. It's, um, it's quite reads quite like a novel and the way the the way the script is written holy crap it is exquisite and very detailed i don't know how else to go about it so it's like we just kind of had to go with the flow of this this is basically one long intricate novel and we are trying to just figure out things little by little but all those tiny little steps are so at least for me very intriguing i don't know how ever anyone else feels about it but those tiny steps are very intriguing to me i just wish we could get more progress in a short amount of time but that's all we'll do for now thank you all for coming thank you all for watching i'll see you all next time and have a nice rest of your day everyone see ya